On today's video, we're going to do a quick design for a coaster using a hexagon infill pattern. This is a really popular pattern. I'm going to show you a way that I like to do it. it doesn't involve any math. It's really simple, just using some guides. Let's jump right in. Jumping right into designing these hexagon patterns, I'm going to start out by doing just a simple sketch on top here. And for this case, I'm gonna be doing something that I need that will be unique to me, just like you've probably all seen those coasters that have a hexagon pattern. That's what I'm gonna be designing in my own style here. So I know that I need these to be 145 with a total diameter there. And then I'm gonna do a really simple offset of two here. Actually, we're going to do 2.5, which will be a pretty common theme for this coaster. So we'll say, okay, we have our design here. I know that I need these coasters to be about 10 millimeters thick, just looking at the ones we're trying to design. So I'm going to pull these up to 10 and say, okay. So there's my basic outline. And the next step is going to be for us to fill this with our hexagon pattern. So I'm going to start by doing a sketch and I'm going to do it on this layer here and we'll join these in together. Um, so first step that I want to do is we're going to come down to create and we're going to choose a simple polygon um, and I'm going to use the inscribe one and I don't like to start in the middle. I think that looks kind of funny. Um, so I'm going to pull this and I want this to be five millimeters and we're going to say enter. And then I am going to try to get our centering to be somewhat there. Okay. We've got this level on this plane. So now my next step is to add a very simple offset to this shape. And what I've found is there's people that'll do these tutorials and they'll give you exact dimensions. I think that takes way too much time. And I'm just gonna set this to 2.5 and say, okay. So now I have this dimensions. Now, the only other thing I need to do is coming off of this corner, I am going to create a 90 degree. And you'll see that little 90 degree pop in there. So that's gonna help me align when I go to duplicate this before I create my pattern. So very quickly, I'm just going to hold the shift key, select all the sides of our hexagon here and do a simple copy. And then I'm going to do just a paste. And this is where I'm not super precise, but I'm just trying to get it close here. I am going to try to get it in there as close as possible. So I can need to come over just a little bit more somewhere right there. And I'm going to say, okay. So now what I have is I've got my two um, hexagons. This is going to be the path that's going between. I can now delete this line and I can start creating my pattern. So with a simple create rectangular pattern, I can come in and select all the parts of the object that I want to use and to create my pattern with. If you notice, I am keeping this shape here. I'm going to come back to that and actually delete that later, but I'm going to use that in figuring out our spacings the same way we did here. And so in this case, we're going to make sure that this is set to spacing. We're going to turn our directions to symmetric in both options. And then I'm just going to start dragging this this way until, if you'll notice, I'm watching this line here. I'm going to set it there. And it looks like it's wanting to snap there for some reason. It's because it's coming to 19.5. Uh, We're going to go 19.45. Uh, still a little bit too far. So we'll come to 19.35. And that looks pretty good. So there I'm just getting it as close as possible to this line to keep that same spacing on this side and this side. Now I need to do our vertical spacing. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to pull down and I'm looking just at this line and this line. And so we'll pull down a little further. That looks like it's a little bit 
too far. Um, and so we are going to just bring this down a little bit. It's a little bit, it's not quite far enough, somewhere in there. So I ended up at 11.15. And there I've got my pattern set. So now all I need to do is add enough hexagons in by increasing the quantity. And if you notice, I've got it symmetrical. So because I didn't start in the middle, it is going to push some more to the side. I just have to make sure I have plenty to cover that. I'm actually going to do one more just for safe measures. And then the same vertically. So I've got the horizontal covered and now the vertical. Okay. So here is my basic shape that I've got created. So we're going to say, okay, at this point. Now I do need to come in and you'll notice I need to delete these lines out that we used as our guide. And if you notice this computer is running a little slow, that is just because we have added so many objects into this section um, it slows it down a little bit. And I actually think we might have a small problem on this one. Um, I feel like there should be another shape there. We are going to run with this. A um, couple things that I could do is turn our body off, select all of these, and then move them. Um, but in this case, I think we're just going to leave it for the sake of time. Okay, so turn our bodies back on and we are going to finish this sketch. Now that our sketch has finished, I should, if everything is done right, be able to click in to here and I have now highlighted this pattern. Um, and yes, there definitely is a little mistake down here. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about it and just do by doing a simple um, extrude of 10 millimeters. I'm going to make sure this says join down here. Looks like it went a little more than 10. And then I'm going to say, okay. And just like that, we have got our hexagon pattern filled in. And this is something that you can apply to any object that you want as an infill pattern. Um, Fairly straightforward, fairly simple. Again, not a big fan of going in measuring everything when I can just use a simple guide system. I don't have to be that precise for this type of design. Let me know what you think in the comments. I uh, can't wait to hear from you guys next time. And uh, thanks for sticking around to the end.